and also go into screen sharing mode. So welcome everybody uh, to today's uh, session on the new features of Mahara 2004 um, on the 15th of May. However, for some of you, it is still the 14th of May. Um, so good evening and um, or good afternoon and also good morning to everybody in the South Pacific. I'm really happy to be uh, facilitating the session with you today in order to give you a little bit of an insight into what you can expect from Mahara 2004. Some of the really big um, feature highlights in order to help you along the way and see which ones you'd definitely like to use very soon and uh, which ones maybe you've even already been looking for for quite a long time. Before we get uh, started though, I'd like to um, give a big shout out to everybody who's been involved in this release. And um, that is a lot of, lot of different people. So while of course we do have the development team here in Wellington in New Zealand, who's been um, shouldering the majority of the work, um, and that is developers, front-end developers, graphic designers, um, testers, system administrators, um, business analysts, graphic designers, and people also reviewing the code. We also have um, had involvement from the community as, as always um, to a very good degree. Um, namely in particular from our translators. Um, they make sure that Mahara is not only available in English, uh, but also in many other languages um, that are spoken around the world. They are from making it more accessible to people in parts of the world where English is not um, either native tongue or one of the official languages. And of course, I'd also like to acknowledge everybody who's been working with Mahara either on an individual level or at their organizations and giving us feedback on how things are going, what works really well, what doesn't work so well, what could be improved, because that certainly helps us um, find the avenues where we will need to look into Mahara and find out what are people using portfolios for these days. So. Thank you very much to everybody for having been involved in this very latest release of Mahara that is named 2004 because it was released in the year 2020 and in the month of April 04. Because we do have two releases per year, um, we name them according to the month in which they have been released to make it easier for people to remember how old their version of Mahara is that they have installed. But now, without much further ado, let's take a look at the new features. And I'd like to do that by um, kind of showing you features first that can be of importance for anybody using Mahara. So really looking more at the people, portfolio authors um, and group members before we are moving on to features that are more specific to organizations and that can really help um, organizations manage um, the accounts of people that are within their organization better. If you have languages available on your Mahara site, um, like I have here, um, then you can see a language toggle directly. Um, in the past, you always needed to go into your settings, preferences, and then select the language that you wanted to use if you hadn't already selected it um, right before you logged into a site. But now with the language toggle, it is um, possible to directly switch to languages right on the screen and change the interface for it. It is not quite yet possible to um, actually also translate the content that you're putting into your portfolios because that is something very different from translating the interface. Um, however, uh, if you want to see Mahara in a different language very quickly, then that can be accomplished via that language toggle. 
And this feature, as many others in this release, um, was actually made possible through the funding from um, some of uh, from our clients. And so they, they were the ones that I'd also, of course, like to acknowledge and thank for having provided the insight in, and the vision in creating new features and allowing us to also um, open source them so that now all of you will be able to um, make use of them. But let's switch back to English for a moment um, so that we all can um, know what is on the screen and um, kind of go into another feature that is of importance, especially when you are on a large site where you might have multiple organizations um, using the site and that there can be quite a lot of people um, on the site who have accounts and therefore it is of importance to find of course the people you want to share your portfolio with quickly. So in this case here, um, if you're looking for a person, um, we have this search menu where it is very easy to just start typing a name and come up with results. And what we've done in Mahada 2004 is actually differentiate between people that are in your own institution um, and people that are outside of the institution. And so everybody in your own institution will be shown first um, so that um, they are more easily accessible and reachable and um, others come on further down. And that really helps because we assume, of course, that for the majority of times, um, people will be looking for others to share their portfolio with from their own organization rather than necessarily all the others that are on a multi-tenanted instance. Um, just kind of briefly, um, Karen, could, I'll just meet you um, because there's a bit of background uh, noise. Okay, so we can very easily select people as usual and uh, share portfolios with them. Now another feature, especially when you've been using Mahara for a long time, like many of you that um, have joined in today's session, is that it can be quite overwhelming to see all the groups that you're in, because you might have more than your fair share here, especially also if you are an administrator or you teach a lot of courses and therefore have a lot of groups set up for submissions. And then, of course, if a semester finished, um, you may not have yet um, kind of wanted to remove people because the groups should still be available for them so that they can see past conversations. Uh, but you might not really want to see them all the time in your sidebar. And we've already had features like limiting the number of groups you can see in the sidebar, um, sorting them alphabetically or according to last, um, last joint date. However, that wasn't quite enough. And so a, a PH burn out of Switzerland um, kind of came up with the idea of labels so that you can group your groups. And so what you can do now is um, on the groups in which you are a member, create a personal label for that group. And you can name those labels anything, nobody but you will see them. And you, of course, all can only label groups that you are a member of, because those are your groups, um, rather than any that um, are just on the site. And so if I now just want to see all the groups that I've labeled with important, I can just filter by that label and only see those two groups now. I can also combine labels. So if I want to see important and semester one, then I will see all the groups that are labeled either important or semester one. We are going with a Boolean or in order to make it easier to um, see also larger groups um, or larger, um, yeah, more groups in one rather than just a very narrow set. But of course, if you only want to see groups for summer semester 2020, for example, 
then um, you can give that label to a group and then only show those. Now, how to put those into the sidebar? So here we've got the course group and the portfolio discussions, and I don't want to see the human computer interactions. And I can accomplish that by going to the preferences and close to the bottom, display only groups labeled with, and instead of choosing my course group, I'm gonna choose important. And like with the tag search, as soon as I start typing, then um, the suggestion is being made if there is already a label available. And again, I can use multiple labels if I like. Make that change. And now I only have these two groups shown in my sidebar. You can also limit the groups shown on your profile page. Um, same functionality, same principle. Um, you decide which groups you would like to see that have one or more labels attached to them. And then those are the ones that are on your profile that other people can see. And that is a nice feature to organize, especially very large um, instances of Mahara for yourself and um, the groups that you are in, in order to keep better track of them and um, keep up with them. Since we are talking about groups, there's another feature that we implemented in Mahara 2004, and that is group defaults. Because when we kind of made a decision of what the default settings should be when you create a group. However, um, that might not be the best approach um, for your organization. And um, so if you have your own Mahara instance, then you can set the group defaults, similarly to how you can set also the defaults for uh, portfolio pages, for the dashboard, for the profile page, and for the group home page. And so you can change all the settings that are available normally on the group screen. And then for example, instead of saying this is an open group, make it a request group, um, but not have friend invitations, but recommendations set as normal. And then only um, group administrators in this case should be creating um, content. You can save those settings. And then when you set up a new group, um, the group will be created with those settings in mind. So we have the request group. Then the creation can only be done by group administrators. And recommendations have been selected. So that is a really nice approach to um, yeah, change everything for permanent time frame. But even if you know you're going to set up a lot of course groups um, to mirror what is on your learning management system, you could set the defaults before you upload groups via CSV file or via uh, web services. And um, then make all those settings that all the course groups have the settings that you need. And then set um, reset the group settings to a more open model, for example, um, if you then want to allow people to create their own groups as well and have certain settings um, made already. So that kind of concludes some of the group settings and the things that you can do directly on on um, a Mahara site. There are a couple of other nice things to have for people working on a site. And uh, one of those is, again, more on the organization level um, rather than something that, um, would, that a person would set. Namely that you can now restrict the file types that you want to allow to be uploaded. Especially in our day and age now where there's a, a lot of um, spam and lots of virus going around, um, some organizations might want to restrict um, the file types that students should be allowed to put into the portfolio system. And so you can 
restrict that and people won't be allowed to upload anything with the respected, respected, uh, respective sorry, um, extension. And that list is managed in the config file um, so that it's very easy to change but does require a system administrator to do so rather than just a site administrator so that things are not changed on the fly from one to the other but um, do need to have um, proper approval by somebody with access to the config. So we've looked at features that you can see on the screen that are important for creating portfolios but now what happens when you actually want to take your portfolio away when you want to archive it or when you want to back it up or just keep a copy for yourself. In the past we've always said um, make an HTML export and also make a leap to A export so that you have the flexibility to either put it back into Mahara with a leap to A or into another portfolio software that supports the leap to A standard but also have HTML um, so that you can just open the portfolio without um, needing to connect it to a Mahara site. Now that kind of makes sense to actually all put into one export, doesn't it? And so we've um, made that happen. So instead of needing to select and needing to decide which uh, export format you want to use, now you just download everything in one go. Um, so the lead to a XML file will be sitting alongside the HTML export, um, making it so that you just have one zip file. If you upload it back into Mahara and there is a lead to a file there, Mahara can recognize that and then import the content as it used to. At the same time, you can also click the HTML file in order to, um, in order to view it in the browser because we are kind of with all the artifacts that, that are in a page, we are um, needing to download those anyway. And now we can actually even be more efficient um, because both the leap to A and XML access the same. And you might've seen very quickly, briefly here on the screen, there was also something about PDF because we also have a um, experimental feature of, P um, of the PDF export. Um, which makes it possible um, for you to export your portfolio also um, as PDFs. That export is very experimental still. We did want to make it available to you though, um, it, so that you can give it a go and also give us feedback on it, how it's working for you, because it is possible to export individual portfolios, be that pages or collections, and um, have them converted into a PDF file and also export all the artifacts along with it. As in the past and right now still, you can print a portfolio page to PDF or just um, put it out on the printer. However, um, that doesn't give you access to the artifacts that have been embedded. In particular, if it is files to download, videos or audio files, you lose that rich content um, because the PDF is really flat. So it is, you can highlight it, but that's about pretty much it. And so with the PDF export, um, what, you, what is happening there is really that um, all the artifacts come along that, so that you can access them um, but you could also just upload the, P the single PDF if you needed to take it through um, a plagiarism checker um, that doesn't really care about any of the other artifacts and therefore could do that, but at the same time also have all audio and video files accessible. And so if we look at the export of what it is in a zip file, then we've got the lead to a file that is important for Mahara. All the export information, so all the files that are part of the portfolio. And in this case, because I exported my entire account, um, also just what is sitting in the files area is included. Um, and then I've got the HTML um, export and also all the PDFs um, corresponding to the portfolios that are in my per, uh, personal portfolio area that can then be looked at. And if you export a collection, 
then all the pages are immediately part of the collection, which is very different from the PDF printing that we've had so far, because there you need to print every single PDF. So lots of good things happening there. Um, and we would really appreciate any feedback to receive on the PDF export. Um, it is also marked experimental because additional software will need to be installed on the server. And um, so we do still want to gather um, more insight from people working with that uh, functionality before we kind of really make it an official part of Mahara. It does work. But there are also still a few more things that need to be sorted out um, in order to make it work even better. Now, the, there are two more pieces of uh, functionality that I'd like to show before we go to the more administrative features. And um, one of them really is, has something to do with seeing your portfolios better. Um, so up to now, what you can see when you go to pages and collections is kind of these cards here. And every card represents a portfolio, be that a page or a collection. And um, there may or may not be a description and you can access all the actions. However, we have been able to kind of sneak something in very, very last minute, namely that you can have cover images. So that's been on our plan for a very long time, um, pretty much since we started investigating how to make this overview page better. And now we've, we've had the chance through a client to implement that feature um, so that you can have a cover image for a particular page or even for an entire collection. And so what you can do is just go to the collection editing screen or to, a, to the page settings and then either upload a file or if you already have a file online that you'd like to use, then you can select it and then that cover image will be displayed. So that's a really nice way to also visually differentiate between the portfolios that are in your account. And that now, of course, opens up a lot of possibilities for us to use those um, cover images elsewhere. So I can already imagine at, that at some point we'll have that available um, also on the latest changes that I can view page or maybe even on the home page like um, University of the Arts London has had for a very long time with, with the customization um, and add more visuals to the to the site rather than just lists. Um, there is also already the idea to do this very same thing with groups so that you can upload a cover image for a group and then display the group home um, the group overview page here that um, we've had earlier and have those cover images displayed here for the groups and have therefore have an easier access uh, to the groups rather than just seeing a very long list of them. So lots of possibilities again. Now, one thing that we can do in Mahara 2004 now, and that really takes us into um, features that are single sign on related, is that if you have multiple institutions on your Mahara site and they are in particular um, hooked up with single sign-on and um, in this case uh, SAML based single sign-on then it is now possible thanks to switch portfolio in Switzerland um, to move your account from one institution to the other without needing admin approval. So this would work really, really well in a setting where you will have an IDP, so an identity provider, um, external authentication method, and you have one institution set up for regular students and one institution for alumni. And you want people to move their account into the alumni institution themselves, then that uh, could be a possibility to use it. And that's very convenient and comfortable to do um, just by clicking the move account and then only the institutions that actually have SAML authentication um, are listed. A request is sent 
um, then one needs to log in to that um, authentication method to confirm that um, the, the move is correct. And of course, it would help to also have the correct password. And that logging in triggers an email to that account um, with a confirmation code that needs to be put into Mahara or um, a link that will need to be clicked in order to really confirm that the account move is correct. Because we don't need to ensure that um, the, the correct people move accounts around and not um, somebody um, accidentally moves it into a wrong account. And therefore, there are a couple of uh, security meshes in there to help us with that. And that now really does already take us into um, the more administrative features of um, the Mahara site that we've made in regards to single sign-on. So in the past, if you're taking a look at, um, for example, my portfolio, um, which is a large Mahara instance available to all schools in New Zealand, um, where some of those schools also have single sign-on set up. Um, you have the normal login uh, box that you're already used to with username and password. And then the single sign-on is kind of hidden really, really back down at the bottom. And in the past, we've kind of made customizations for clients so that the single sign-on button is more prominent. And now, since we've done that a few times, We've decided to actually put that directly into Mahara itself um, to make it easier for people to have, who have worked with that single sign-on to not have to put a customization into their code base, but have it just work out of the box. So as soon as there is a um, single sign-on possibility there, the login box changes so that the single sign-on login is more prominent um, because it is then really oftentimes the, the case that that is the primary authentication method. But the normal regular uh, or the, the regular login box is still available and the language strings, of course, can always be changed. If you have multiple single sign-on methods on the site, that'll still work. If there are only two, a second button will be displayed and you can have the institution name on it, a short name, an acronym, anything that you like. Um, and if there are more than two, then you're being taken to the IDP page where you can then select uh, one of the authentication methods. Kind of going back to the administration area now when you want to set up single sign-on for one of your institutions, um, you have a number of additional op uh, possibilities there that really help the management. Because on the site, we have the roles of um, site administrator, site staff, institution admin, institution staff. And normally you kind of need to place people into these roles manually by selecting them in the administration area. However, if you are a very large organization, then that can be quite tedious. And um, therefore it is now possible when you have single sign on um, enabled and have that respective information, of course, stored in the IDP that you can say, okay, a particular role in my identity provider, in my authentication source, is supposed to have, uh, is always the administrator role. And so you can make that automatically a site administrator. So if one person then logs in, they have site administrator permissions without you needing to do anything else. And the same, of course, goes for site staff, institution administrators and institution staff. So you can enroll um, instructors, lecturers, tutors, and so on, um, automatically in the staff role, and therefore giving them direct access to the um, staff permissions and also staff capabilities on Mahara. Now here we've got this role mapping for auto group administration. Um, that is a very interesting feature um, that was developed because we had um, had the request for making it so that a support person is automatically enrolled in every single group on the site. 
um, in order to be able to monitor very easily and um, therefore then also help people. And so this person with that role from the IDP, or it can of course be a couple more people, will, once they log into the site, automatically be added to all existing groups and also to all new groups, and they cannot be removed from the group so that nobody accidentally takes them off their group. So that works really well on the institution level. Um, however, in certain circumstances, we might also need it on the site level. And therefore, it is also possible to automatically have that role administer all the groups on the site if it is in a context where that is possible, um, especially if you have a very large organization or the, comprised of multiple smaller ones and one person needs to oversee everybody. And that was a big change in Mahara and is really helpful um, for the automation of a number of administration processes. Because when we put new features into Mahara, we are always looking to improve um, the usability and not just for regular students or teachers, but also for others, for administration um, staff in order to give them yeah, better tools on hand and make their life easier as well. And so these features here were welcome addition um, to help in particular very large organizations. Now, one thing that we have also changed is to humanize the language in Mahara more. And so we are not calling people users anymore because in English that does have um, can have a quite quite negative connotation, of course. And so we are calling people who they are. We are calling them people. Um, and in, depending on the context that they are in, they are group members. Or if it's more on the technical side where you kind of really need the user, um, we call them account holders. Or then also portfolio authors and institution members. But what we really wanted to do is um, get away from calling people users and have that um, negative meaning always in mind. And we've had very good feedback from people with whom we've discussed this change because of course it is very far reaching. Um, and um, yeah, we're confident that we should be making this change. Um, there are still a few instances where you can see the occasional user around, mainly in the administration, um, especially when we are connecting to third party plugins like um, single sign on, where we just need to use the term user in order to um, match what is um, being presented on the other end. And um, you'll see we also still have username um, because there hasn't really been a good alternative for that yet. <coughs> But besides all these highlights that I've shown you now, there are a number of other um, new features that didn't quite make it on the list, but that are nevertheless um, less important. And so, for example, also there's an alert when you use peer assessments and a peer assessor can't change anything anymore so that they know why that is the case. Or if you're using the sign off and verification functionality, then you actually see when somebody signed off their portfolio and who was the verifier um, in case that it needs to be available also to other people. Um, all of these changes that we've made um, in Mahara 2004 are documented in our manual, the Mahara manual, not anymore the Mahara user manual. And um, you can read up on them there. Um, there is also the feature video that kind of goes through all the things that I've shown you um, in a more condensed and shorter version. And you're very welcome to check all of that out. Um, we are also very fortunate that some translators have taken on the task to translate the manual into other languages. And in particular, Japanese is actually pretty much complete. So that's always um, very amazing. You can download and install Mahara, of course, um, on your own servers. Um, if you do not work with a support company that does that for you in regular intervals and um, give it a go. Give the new version a spin, um, upgrade to your current site. You are very welcome to do so. 
Now with the release of Mahada 2004, that also means that Mahada 18.10 is not supported anymore for sec um, with security um, updates. Therefore, if there's any new uh, security vulnerability found um, in Mahada code, 18.10 and also earlier versions would not get those. And because we do know that some organizations can't necessarily move to newer versions of Mahara as quickly as we might like um, for various reasons, um, we've decided to offer a premium service um, that makes it possible to extend the security support for a version for an additional two years so that um, an organization could stay on a particular version of Mahara for up to three and a half years. That's a very long time. Um, and of course, doesn't give you all the new features that we are releasing every time. But if you have to or want to stay on a particular version, then that is a possibility. So as you can see at the bottom here, we have Mahara 18.10, which now finished the um, support in April. But with the extended security support, and it is the first version of Mahara that officially has it, um, you can continue using it until April 2022 and be assured that the backport um, security vulnerabilities that are known, made known to us and that affect Mahara 18.10 are for you. Same thing then also for Mahara 1904 where the lifetime can be extended until October 2022 and so on. Um, this is a premium service um, because we do want to give people the opportunity to stay on there while at the same time continue supporting the community as best as we can. Um, from Catalyst perspective in maintaining the product, putting new features in, bringing out releases and um, therefore we are not putting the security or we are not bringing out an official LTS that everybody can use, um, but stick to the supported versions for the community support. And then the extended security support is available to organizations that want to um, purchase that service. Now, as always, if you have any questions, um, please do feel free to get in touch. And um, before that, though, we, will, we still have time to have any of your questions answered. So please feel free to activate your microphone um, or type in the chat and ask away. Yes, the PDF export has definitely garnered a lot of um, a lot of comments, um, especially for those that are working with um, accreditation bodies, where they where, where people do need to keep a portfolio, but um, at the same time also need to support uh, need to submit documentation, usually in PDF form, so that um, students and learners or professionals can definitely. Um, keep their portfolio in their usual way online with all the functionalities available on Mahara, yet at the same time also very conveniently submit all of that um, to, the, to an organization. Yes, and I definitely look forward to what you think of the export and how you can make it happen, what you might also be um, using it for. So yes, if your microphone works, please do feel free to use it. Um, and if you'd like me to go into one particular feature again or um, show you something else, um, please also let me know. I see that some people are typing, so we'll just hold tight until they are done. Thanks for having come along, Stephen. Um, 
I hope you'll be able to put the new version on your site um, at some point, uh, but maybe you, you want to hold off until summer um, for the usual upgrade window. Um, because we are right in the middle of the um, semester, of course, here at the moment. Um, Karen asks if it is possible to change the landing page so that it looks more like a web page or blog. Um, Karen, you can change the landing page. Um, there are a couple of ways to do that. Uh, let me go back into the screen sharing for that to demonstrate that to you. Um, so the built-in possibility is that you create a page on the site level and then set and that is that is for the dashboard page though only um, and then set the landing page to be that page. Um, so that is a feature that we've implemented a few versions ago. Um, so there's this custom landing page available, which people will see um, when they log in for the first time. So it is only the dashboard page. However, that way you can point them to a particular group or you can point them to a temporary page where you might have more information on that you can represent better visually when you do not have all those dashboard blocks at the bottom. Um, if you want to change the landing page um, that people see when they first get to Mahara, then you can also customize that in a number of ways, um, either by changing the templates here itself, because all that part here from edit this text um, with those three boxes all sits in a template in the theme that can be changed. Um, if you take a look at the mahara.org homepage, you can see kind of the changes that we've made for our community page because that is still also a Mahara instance. But we, for example, moved the login to the right hand side, which is a built in feature in Mahara. But then we customized the, the general homepage um, so that the focus in our case is on the search box because that's the main thing that people would need on Mahara immediately. And then all these elements here actually just sit in one of the static pages um, on the locked out homepage static page. So that entire block uh, can be very easily managed directly from the site administration area. And that looks more like, like a regular homepage. So certain things you can directly do um, in the Mahara site. Um, and then other things like the footer here or the, the very different header and also the custom navigation that um, stays there besides then once you're logged in having the normal Mahara navigation in the sidebars is all possible because um, that is all style sheets. Uh, Stacy says, I think students will use the PD PDF export as an option that may appear to be easy or more read, uh, readily accessible option than traditional ones. Um, yes, um, of course, you're, you're right, Stacey, that oftentimes a document seems to be a bit um, easier for people to handle. And so, yes, having our three export options available now will be really good to see which ones um, people prefer. And of course, two of them um, can be used without Mahara and the third one then um, is the machine readable format, the lead to a format in order to put it back into a Mahara site. So if you like, um, you can ask more questions, but for the time being, I'll just switch off the recording. <laughs>